Cool. So uh, do you recall your question or do you want me to read it off what you submitted? Um, I did remember most of it, but I think the question, you'd probably have a better chance with what I wrote. Okay, okay. So the question you asked was, uh, in Google Search Console, you got a content wider than screen and a clickable elements too close together error. And so you're asking, you say, you think you fixed the clickable elements, but you're not seeing that the wider than screen or anything different from the portfolio pages that don't have that error. So it sounds like uh, you, okay, so if I'm, if I'm understanding your question right, you went into Search Console and you saw the error under uh, mobile usability. Correct. And that, I mean, that's great. I'm glad you're looking in there because Search Console is going to literally tell us how Google understands our site. And there's, you know, we can spend thousands on tools, but we can also bypass that and get straight from Google. And, you know, they're mobile first in the way they index websites. So when they're evaluating websites to show up in Google or rank, they're looking at the mobile version and deciding if the mobile version is worthy they're not looking at the desktop version to decide whether to rank a site. So that's why this is so important. Um, now, there are a couple errors you might find in that, and you found two of them, the content uh, wider and the clickable elements. So a couple of notes with these. The first note is when you see this error in Search Console, you can click on the error and it will give you at least a few example pages that seem to have this error. And so what I like to do is ask myself, especially if I'm familiar with the website, is there something in common? Is this a common template, for instance, that all these pages share that might have something in common? And if that is, then I want to look at the template and see maybe there's an issue in the template file. Or sometimes it's just individual pages, one or two, that's going. Uh, the second thing I do is you within Search Console or outside of Search Console, you can access what's called the mobile usability tool. I'm sorry, the mobile friendly test, Google's mobile friendly test. Um, that's just a website that Google has for free. Let me pull it up. And uh, I'll share my screen. So all you have to do really is Google the Google mobile friendly test and you'll see that, there we go. So this is where Google Search Console is getting this data. They're running it on your site for you. And so Search Console is a great way of getting it site-wide on each individual page. Um, I'm having a little slow problem, but we could just simply enter any URL on this website. Let's grab one for, uh, let's just grab this one from Curious Ants. And we paste it. Because remember, this is a page by page tool, not a site wide tool. In this case, if you were seeing an error in Search Console, you would put the page that Search Console says is an error. And we just hit test URL. But if you were if you were developing a site, right, mm -hmm. probably the best place to to do this would be maybe two things. One would be the home page because it typically looks different than the other pages of the site, and then maybe an example inner page like the about page. Right. But if you were in development and this was in the staging server, you couldn't use this tool because mm -hmm. the crawler needs to have access to the tool. So it only works on live pages. Yeah, so like when we do our development, it's it's always live, just yeah. subdomain and stuff. Yeah, <clears throat> um, there are other ways to test this, but uh, pardon me as this takes a while. I'm just having slow computer problems lately. I have too. I, I wonder, thought it was. Ah. Uh, I think it's my new password manager. Ah, uh, well, mine is. I need to clear off something. I, you know, I just need to clear mine out. Yeah. This isn't a consequence of being in the Curious Ants group, is it? I've no, uploaded I Trojans mine... to everybody's. So. <laughs> yeah, I think mine is a consequence of having too many images and videos of Moxie. 
<laughs> All right. It fills up too much space. So, um, what, what, to, to get back to our question, this is going to tell us if there are any specific errors. <clears throat> if there were an error, it would actually show us on the right hand side a screenshot. Oh. And, okay. and with that, you can see how Google is rendering the mobile version of your page. So it might look great on your phone. You might use Chrome, I'm using Firefox development tools to show a mobile version. But it, in this case, it's the Google crawler's ability to see the page. Now with the, the error you received, uh, elements too wide for screen, Sometimes that is a function of having an image that the dimensions are too wide on. And so it doesn't fit and it kind of pushes things off the screen size for the, the bot that's viewing the page. Uh, video, embedded videos can also be a problem because typically they don't shrink in scale or they can only shrink so far. But Look at the screenshot of your page and see if it does squish off the side. And then you should be able to identify what might be your problem. Okay. Uh, that's so, how I would troubleshoot it. Now, so even, yeah. even if you can't, right? Even if it's like, man, it just looks fine to me. I love it. It's fine. And Or if the way you've done it, the image goes off on mobile or whatever. Um, that doesn't affect you search-wise, does it? So uh, Google is evaluating the mobile version of the page for ranking, yeah. right? And in this way, usability is a SEO ranking factor. Because, you know, we've probably, you've probably heard that usability is a ranking factor. This is one of the ways usability might be a ranking factor. So I'm so David. I'm thinking of about like because sometimes we will do a uh, like an image in the background, right, of the hero area, and it's only there for like making it look pretty, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, does Google care about that kind of thing? I would run this test and see if it throws one of those errors. Okay. Right now, I will. After saying all of that, it is very common to look at this and say, I do not see a problem and still get an error in Search Console. In fact, sometimes I will randomly get an email from Search Console. Hey, your web pages are no longer mobile friendly. And I'll be like, I literally haven't touched that page in months. And so what I do is I go into Search Console and I hit, Submit for validation. And then a couple, a week later, Google says, yep, it's fine. So it's yeah. like sometimes Google has an internal glitch. Yeah. And they'll give a false positive, especially with this mobile-friendly test. Okay. So, so the, the first thing is just to use this to test because it will give you a screenshot of what it looks like in mobile. Okay, yeah, that helps because this particular, it's a portfolio with dozens and dozens of like literal copies of the same page and only like four of them, I think, are coming up with the content wider. So, right. like, I think the the two close, um, the wider than click or whatever, the click one, I think yeah. I fixed, but... Clickable elements too close to yeah. yeah, but the... Um, too wide one was confusing because it is a copy of other pages that did test fine. Right. So Test them in this, see what the screenshot looks like. And then if it looks fine, submit it for verification again. And it might have just been one of those like Google glitches. What if? What if you, when you do this, what if the screenshot it generates doesn't even match the site? Then then you should think about why that's the case. Because remember, it's using the Google 
bot to screenshot it. So that is what Google sees when they see your page. Hmm. So for instance, another use of this exact tool Google has endorsed is we, you know, we all use WordPress. And so we, for a moment we say, oh, thank goodness, we don't have to worry about this stuff. But you know, a lot of people are using JavaScript frameworks to build websites. I don't know why, it's a terrible idea. But you can use this tool to see if Google can even read your JavaScript framework. And, and so Google said, hey, if you, you have a question of whether we can read your JavaScript framework rendered site, use this tool. So in other words, Dave, to your question, if it renders different, you should wonder whether you are, for instance, excluding Google from seeing your JavaScript. Hmm. It, uh, it, uh, it used to be a practice, especially in old WordPress websites, where you would tell Google, don't go to the folder that has all the code. Don't look at the CSS, don't look at the JavaScript, because it used to not matter. Now it does. So we really want to give Googlebot access to those things. And it, it could be as simple as allowing changing a robots.txt to allow it to see everything so that it now can see the JavaScript and CSS and render the page appropriately. Okay. But it, it, Dave, if you're looking at a particular site, I would go into Search Console and see if you're finding those errors under mobile usability. Okay. And if, <clears throat> if they show up as a mobile usability error in Search Console, then, then the that trumps the screenshot. But the screenshot in this tool can be really helpful to troubleshoot problems. Yeah, like when I look at one of the sites, I mean, it looks like um, a CSS isn't loaded properly or something like that. Right. And, and it could be as simple as like an old robots.txt that's not allowing Google to see the CSS. Again, that used to be what we do because Google didn't care about our CSS. But now it does because that allows the media queries to see the mobile version of the site, right? And that's what Google cares about. On, on the one side, it looks it looks like it sees all the text and it, it just looks like there's no image in the background or something like that. Right. But and, very, and, very and usable from Google's perspective. Well, right. And, and that's why I'd go in the search console and check to see if it's throwing those errors there. If it doesn't see the errors there, then I would be like, okay, fine. Hmm. But if there are errors, then I would work to it. And I would just double check my robots.txt to make sure it's allowing Google to see your stuff. So I think this is a, um, and I don't know if I've got it, because like I've got a, um, a site audit um, a standard operating procedure. And I don't know if doing this test is on that. And it probably should be, huh? Well, with so doing this test on every single page is a pain. Yeah, I wouldn't do it on every single. So, in other words, if like there's a somebody says a redesign, or give me a, your opinion on our site, or I don't know something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I would. So, if if you're talking about a site you're currently working on, one of the steps of the Curious Ants process is weekly check Search Console. Yeah. And, and one of the things you should check every week is for these errors. Yeah. And so that's a much more scalable way to see this tool site-wide. Then, you know, I put a couple pages in and they'll look fine, which. Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 David, I'm thinking more like, like I've had a couple of people said, hey, um, we want you to start hosting the site, right? And so part of the audit is like letting them know, hey, this is broken or this needs to be changed or whatever. And we'll charge you X amount of money to fix sure, it. Or... Sure. Yeah. 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 And maybe, maybe because they can grant you search console access and then revoke it. Okay. So maybe okay. part of the evaluation process, so for instance, when I do an audit for clients, I'm like, I can't even start without search console access. Yeah. 
Okay, like, that makes sense. And you can, and I show, I, I make sure they do it in a way where they're not giving me their Google password and then they can revoke it at the end if they desire because that's their data. It's not my business. If we're no longer working together, they should be able to revoke my access without having to change their password. But yeah. like even a, a, a massive, you know, three week long comprehensive SEO audit, I'm using all my third party tools, but I'm definitely using Search Console too. That makes sense. Right. Okay. And, and we haven't even talked about being webmaster tools, which is underrated and awesome. But on one, oh, oh, own, oh, what? ah, you can go with Oni. Oni. If that helps. <laughs> I'm sorry. I will get it. That's okay. Does that help answer your question? Yes, that, that does give me a lot to go on. And I didn't see or notice or use the mobile friendly test. So that helps too. Okay. That'll help me figure it out. Yeah. If you go in Search Console and you click deeper into it, it will actually bring you up a screenshot in Search Console too. Okay. So you could just click a little further in and get to it. But, but okay. no, I'm very, yeah, this, very new with Search Console. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you'll find it to be a hugely helpful tool the more you get into it. Great. Cool. Great question. That was a great question. I really was.